Hey guys, welcome back to Raya's tie-dye and today we're going to show you how to tie-dye two bandanas, two different designs. So the first design is going to be a quadruple swirl and the second design is a hemostat mandala, which I love to do, but these are super thin bandanas so it's perfect for the hemostats. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join the Raya's tie-dye family. And we're gonna get started right now. All right, you guys, so I have two 100% cotton bandanas. They are very thin. You can see the table through them. So you're not gonna need much dye for these. But one of these is going to be liquid dye and the other one is going to be ice dye. So for the first one, well, let me tell you this first. Both of these have been soaked in soda ash. Uh, they have been pre-washed before we did the soda ash and then they soaked in soda ash. And then they were spun out in the washer so they're still damp. They're not like dripping wet or anything like that. So the first tie that we're going to do is we're going to do a quadruple swirl. So all we're going to do for this one is we're going to fold it in half. It feels like it's a little stretched out, sort of, probably from chilling in the soda ash, but just kind of line it up the best that you can. And then we're going to fold it in half one more time. And it's all up to you what way you want your swirls to go. I don't really care, so I'm just going to do it my normal way of swirling. But we're going to use a hemostat for our swirl. And we're going to pick the very center. So have your hemostat locked in there, and then we're going to start to twist it. So because we folded it in half and then in half again, it is going to have, when you open it up, for of the same swirl. So this one's going to be ice dye. And we're just going to swirl this just like any other thing that we normally swirl. Swirl it together. And this one, like I said, is going to be ice dye. So when you open this up, you should have four swirls that look pretty close to being the exact same. Uh, depending on how you put your dye on or how much of which color you put on, you can use any colors. I am actually using Lime Pop Green, Robin's Egg Blue, and Pink. So there might be a little purple in there after the blue and the pink mix, but that is okay. And before I even take that hemostat out, I'm going to put some rubber bands on. I'm going to use my tight blue ones. Help secure it before I do anything else. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to unlock my hemostat and try to pull that out. Now this fabric is a little thin like you saw so just be careful you're not trying to rip a hole in there. I do not personally use bandanas however you can use bandanas for a lot of different things so if you don't have a mask and you prefer a bandana you can use it for that. If you use them as headbands you can use it as a headband. If you like to wear them around your neck, you can do that. Fall is coming up. So it's not a perfect swirl. It is tiny and thin and we're just going to do pie pieces for this, but you are going to want to keep the green and the pink away from each other. And uh, I would make the blue kind of a bigger section between the green and the pink because that way, if the pink does kind of creep over a little bit, it's just going to make purple with the blue and it's not going to go into the green and make a brown. So I would just try really hard not to put the pink and the green next to each other unless you want the brown in there. That's totally fine. I don't think brown's a terrible color, but it's not my favorite. I don't think it's very many people's favorites, but it is brown. 
So there's our first one. Now for that one, like I said, it's gonna be ice dyes. So that one's gonna go in the Rubbermaid tub after I put the ice on it with the border and everything. And I'll show you that before we go to dye it. So this one is gonna be a hemostat mandala. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So we are folding this one in half. Make sure you're smooth out wrinkles and all that lining everything up then fold in half again and you want the center of your mandala to be the corner that doesn't have an opening to it it has one opening but you can tell you can't get to the single layer so right here there's four over here there's four and over here there's four over here there's only two so you want this as the center. So you're gonna take the open side. This one's not open, this one is. Hold the center, take the open side up and over, smooth it out, then go again one more time. Just like a mandala you would do on a tapestry or a shirt. Then we're going to grab all of this fabric and flip it over and do it on this side. So hold the center, pull this back, and then pull it back one more time. Okay. So now we're only using hemostats for the whole mandala section. So we have curved hemostats. They don't really make like a ton of difference, but they will uh, help make the white lines in the ba bandana. So if you want them to be curved, you can use the curved. Um, I don't know if you can see that it's curved or we have straight ones. I prefer the curved. They look more like a flower when you get done. So I always have the curved part facing downwards. So it kind of looks like a flower petal. And it doesn't really matter which side you start on, so I'm just going to start on this side because I'm already here. So I'm going to put my hemostat on there and lock it on the very last lock because there's three different areas you can lock it from. So there's one. And then you're going to go on the very opposite side of that and do another one. So I'm going to do it this way. So downward and inward is always what I do, downward and inward. So then you wanna come up just a little bit from that and I kinda want these to connect. So where that hemostat starts on the bottom, I'm gonna make sure the end of my um, hemostat is gonna be right up against that and lock that in gonna look really weird but really cool so I accidentally locked it I'm not left-handed so don't laugh at me definitely not left-handed <laughs> so do the same thing try to match up your hemostats so they kind of are gonna connect when you open it you can do sinew for this. It almost does the same thing, but hemostats kind of leave a cleaner line. Straighter, cleaner line. So now the hemostats are getting in my way. So for this project, I am actually going to use both straight and curved team stats because I have five of each and I kind of want this mandala to be a lot bigger than that. So I am going to use the straight ones now. So I'm just going to use every single hemostat that I have because it'll look awesome. And I don't want it to be super tiny, so kind of scrunching this together just a tad. And lock that. It 
If you do not have hemostats, by the way, don't forget I have links in the description box below. It'll take you right to Amazon so you can purchase these. Um, they are not expensive. They are normally like surgical use. Um, surgeries, I think mostly, but you can buy them. I don't know what anybody else would use these for other than tie-dye. Because, you know, that's what I use them for. Other than the medical industry. I am not left-handed like I already told you, so don't laugh at me. But now it's getting the thicker fabric, so you're going to have to try to scrunch them in there together like you could with sinew. They're not going to match up perfect, but they're going to look good when you get done with them. And like, uh, that's another thing I wanted to tell you guys. This fabric is like really thin, so you're not going to need a whole lot of dye. And I know I've already said that. However, when you go to do these, it's probably going to spread super fast. So make sure you pick colors that are okay being mixed together. So if you don't want brown in here, don't pick green and red, don't pick green and purple, don't pick orange and purple. I think that's the safest bet. If you don't want ugly looking colors or you don't like brown, don't mix colors that don't go good together. So for this one, I think we're going to do uh, for the mandala itself, blue and purple. And for the background, we're going to do red just to Ooh, that's a hard one. It's all it'll let me do. So, this is what it looks like. And then the rest, we're going to scrunch up and put rubber bands on. So, I'm going to get some blue rubber bands for the red. This one is going to be a liquid dye. I think blue and purple for the mandala and red on the outside will look pretty cool. Another thing too, I, don't, I love colors that make other colors pop. So if you wanted to try it, purple mandala with a yellow background would be super awesome. Just like I said, with the yellow, you have to be careful because if you mix the yellow with the purple, it's going to make a mucky looking weird color and you kind of don't want that. It's kind of yucky looking i think so i'm just gonna the hemostats kind of make this a little hard to do because they just kind of want to sit in the way but you can do it i have faith it the scrunch is not gonna be perfect either <laughs> at all but i'm trying so even if you come in here on the other side of one of these hemostats should be fine. I just don't want it to be too loose, if that makes any sense. But like I said, this fabric is super thin, so I think you're not going to need a whole lot. And then I have these little corners sticking out, so I'm going to try to get them in there too. If my rubber bands will stay. So there's that. And then in a second, I'm going to show you my tub again. So I'll do this probably for the next couple of ice dive videos, just so you guys can kind of see what I went to instead of just doing the shoe tray, because the shoe tray is fine for ice dive, but then the shoe tray is flimsy. So if you grab both sides of the shoe tray and do this, you, it can bend a lot. So if you're trying to get that to the sink, and you have it somewhere where you really don't want to spill it, you're probably going to spill it because I've done it. And try to get my husband to do it for me, and he does. He does really good at it, but I suck. So I spill it. Um, but the tub is a lot easier. I can move it myself. I don't have to ask anybody for help. It's not going to spill anywhere. There's plenty of room in there. So real quick, I'll show you what I do for that. Okay, so here is my Rubbermaid tub. This is a elevated rack that I bought in the kitchen aisle at Walmart. So I'm really glad I found them because I looked in the bathroom section. I looked in hardware. 
I looked in bedroom area. I looked everywhere for one of these and I could not find them. And then finally, I was looking around the kitchen area and I found these. So these are stackable. I bought a couple, I think like four of them, maybe three of them. And I bought a couple of tubs too, that way if I wanna do more than one, I can. But all I do is I have this rack in here. And when you ice dye, I will ice dye under the camera like I always do with you guys. And this will have the border around it with the dye and the ice. And after I'm done with this, all I'm gonna do is set this right on top of this rack. That way you're not disturbing any of your dye or your ice and you're not gonna drop it. So if you keep it on the rack, just put it down in here on top of this. Then you don't have to worry about this even touching the muck or anything like that. This will drip right down into your Rubbermaid tote. And then when you're done, you can pick this up out, put it in the sink to rinse. And then all of this, just take this out and rinse it real good. And then take this and dump it in either your sink or your tub and then rinse that out and then boom, you can use it again. But also another benefit is so that nothing dries out when you're dyeing it. I've had this problem. If it dries out before the dye has had time to react to your fabric, uh, the colors won't stay as good. So a tote also serves the purpose that you can put a top on it. If you put the top on it, it's less likely to dry out. So that's also good. So this is kind of what I'm doing with my ice dye now. That way you know what it looks like because I can't put this tote under the top down view. So you're not going to be able to see that. So here's this and we're ready to dye these two bandanas. So let's get to it. All right guys, so this is our quadruple swirl bandana. I put baby blue on either side of it. That way we can kind of keep the pink and the green separate. This is pink and this is lime pop green. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna transfer this rack into our Rubbermaid tote and put ice on top of this. Then we'll put the lid on it, let it sit for 24 hours. And then once you're ready to open it, you're gonna wanna rinse it in water until the water runs clear, cold water is preferable to remove the soda ash and then you can warm it up as you go to get the dye out. And then we can do our reveal for this and the mandala. So we'll dye the mandala too real quick and then let that sit for 24 hours as well. All right, you guys, so this is the mandala, the hemostat mandala. We just went blue, sorry, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, and then the rest of this is red. We did that on both sides. So like I said earlier, you do not need a whole lot of dye for this. It will pretty much go all the way through it. So um just do what you can on the top and then when you get to the bottom it'll pretty much be mostly colored in just when i get touch up a couple of spots uh so the red and the blue if they mix it'll make purple so totally awesome there if you do end up overlapping them a little bit up here that's totally fine if the red and the purple mix together it doesn't matter it'll still make purple so you're safe there so this is also going to sit 24 hours just like the swirl and then we'll be ready to open these up together. So we will rinse them separately under cold water until the water runs clear, like I always tell you guys, and then we can do the reveal. And then I'll talk about washing directions and whatnot when we get there. So next up is the reveal. 
All right, guys, so we have a quadruple swirl bandana and a hemostat mandala bandana to show you. That sounds like a lot to say, and that's because it is. So try it, I dare you. We're gonna start with a quadruple swirl first. So we used baby blue, pink, and lime pop green for this one. And I feel like it's gonna be awesome, but we'll see. So let's open this bad boy up. It is thin, just remember that. It's thin, thin fabric. It's like a little tapestry. Ooh, that's pretty. I love that. Ooh. So, this is the quadruple swirl and it turned out super awesome. That really tight center there, that's from using the hemostat. So if you don't already have hemostats, I have links in the description box below. I definitely recommend them, they are awesome. So there's that one. Super pretty and I love it. I was really scared I was gonna get orange, or not orange, sorry, brown because of the pink and the green. But I didn't and it looks awesome. Now we got this bundle of joy. So, this is dripping because in order for me to get the excess out, I would have to take the heme stats off and maybe you wanna hear me clink and clink on the rounds a little bit. So, I'm gonna try to talk and not splatter myself in the face and I will probably squeeze it out a little bit before I open it because I'm kinda die in the face prone. Is that a thing? So the scrunch is probably not gonna look like a scrunch because this is really thin fabric, but that's okay. Gross. Okay. So we're gonna start taking these hemostats off. I used five straight hemostats and five curved. So I just have to unlock every one of them. And before I even open it, I'm gonna kind of wipe any of the dye that are on my hands off because I don't wanna spread them around. So hopefully these hemostats give us really nice lines. Um, if you're worried about the white line staying. Uh, you could do the Dawn dish soap thing that I do. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna do it with this one. I think it depends on when I open it. If I really want those white lines to stay, I'll probably do it because that's like the best way to do it. Dawn dish soap in hot water for 30 minutes. Make sure you kind of wash and machine it with your hand a little bit. It'll help get the excess dye out and then you don't have to worry about your white not being white. So we're gonna open this up. This one was folded just like a mandala. And we have a blue and purple mandala. Open! There we go. There's our hemostat mandala. The blue ran just a tad. Or is that the purple? No, that's the blue but it ran just a tad, but it looks super awesome. So I love hemostats for that reason too. Links in the description below. So that cut that's in this video is because I cannot talk today. So these two bandanas, I'm gonna enunciate, will be available for purchase on www.riastiedeye.com. I can't talk today, so remember that's why I have to do this again and there was a cut, so I'm sorry. And just thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you next time. And happy tie-dye. Thanks, guys.